Well, hey everyone, we're glad that you're joining us today. Now, I wanna highlight something that happened yesterday, which was we had powwow here on campus, which serves our community by distributing fresh produce. We wanna say thank you to everyone who came out and helped make a difference during this difficult season. Now, during this time, we wanna let you know that we're here for you, so we wanna be praying for you. Go to stmarkphx.org, click on SMLC online, and if you scroll down, you'll see a button that says prayer request. Fill it out, and while you're there, complete the digital welcome card, plus you'll find family devotions and a place to give electronically to be able to support this ministry and to continue to put God first in your life. Now, we hope that this worship service is meaningful for you and your family, so please share this either on social media or simply by sending a link to a friend. What an easy way to spread hope and also introduce someone to Jesus. Now, as we begin worship, may God's word and the love of Jesus pour into you and give you strength. Thanks again for watching. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah comes to fight for me and I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is A hallelujah I will watch the darkness flee I raise a hallelujah In the middle of the mystery I raise a hallelujah You hold on me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is. of my enemies Sing a little louder Louder than the unbelief Sing a little louder My weapon is a melody Sing a little louder Heaven comes to fight for me Sing a little louder In the presence of my enemies a melody Sing a little louder Heaven comes to fight for me Sing a little louder I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises, Lord Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated
we continue our worship today, let's go to God as we confess our sins in a time of prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we see the world around us in decay and we see the darkness in our own hearts. Father God, we long for the day when your light shines before us all, when death is truly crushed forever and when evil is punished and justice reigns. As we live our lives in this fallen world, help us to see the suffering around us. And as you are compassionate with us and our brokenness, may we be compassionate to those in need. Father God, keep us from being lost in our comfort, from turning away from those who suffer, and let us love them as you have loved us. And all God's people said, amen. And one of my favorite ways to worship God is to take my guitar and sing through some of my favorite worship songs. You know, whenever I do that, God just uses the words of the songs to speak to me in a different way. And I thought that, hey, we could just do that here today right now. And so I'm going to invite a couple of my friends to sing along with us. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You freed every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. And Jesus has done great things indeed. Let me share this passage from the book of John. It says, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So receive this freedom today, freedom from the shackles of sin, knowing that you are forgiven in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. Yeah. You'll be faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. And I know you will do it again. For your promises, yes and amen, you will do great things. God, you do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You freed every captive from break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom. Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah, you have done great things. You've done 
great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God. Have done great things. You have done great things. Oh, you have done great The world has a lot of fears, and they all have names. The fear of wide open spaces is called agoraphobia. The fear of spiders, arachnophobia. The fear of needles, can you roll up your sleeve for me? Is known as trypanophobia. Okay, 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 just, 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 just. And the fear of heights? Acrophobia. If you're afraid of the dark, you've got nyctophobia. Oh! Fear of long words is hippopoto monstrosus quipedelia phobia. Why would they call it that? Oh! And fear of being trapped in a confined space with no escape? Claustrophobia. Oh! Most fears are bad. But there's one kind of fear that's good. The fear of God, realizing that he's powerful, he's in charge, and he loves you perfectly. When we understand this perfect love, it has a way of making us all not so afraid. So when it comes to fear, we have a choice. Fear God. or fear everything else. Which, by the way, is called panophobia. We're continuing on in this series that we started last week on Fear Not. And so I wanted to start with a question this morning, and I wanted to ask you guys, why are you so afraid of the future? Well, if we're honest, and we think about that question for a little bit, I think one of the big reasons is, is because we don't really know what's gonna be going on in the future. It's, it's an unknown. In fact, even our best forecasts are really just educated guesses. Why? Because nobody really knows what's gonna happen. Mankind can transplant livers, it can program computers, it can send men to the moon, it can, uh, we can even watch our church service right there on our iPads or on our big screen TVs at home today. You can even get groceries delivered to your house. Seriously, when you start thinking about all that man's accomplished during this, I don't know, during this history, it's, it's incredible. But even if you have the highest IQ ever recorded in the history of man, you still have no idea about what's gonna happen in the future, do you? I don't care how smart you are, I don't care how smart you sound, they're just always just educated guesses. And on top of all that, the future seems to be, despite all of our best efforts and all of our efforts to the contrary, simply one of those uncontrollable things of life. So as a way of, of coping, I guess, we try to control the future with our worries and, I don't know, with our fears. But that, we discover too, just doesn't work, not even a little bit. So what do you do? I mean, how do you deal with the uncertainty and the unpredictability you know, the fears about the future. Well, let's start this discussion this morning with, with what actually the Bible says about the future in the first place, because it does say a lot of stuff. I mean, what is it that we can absolutely positively know about the future moving forward? Well, God actually gives us some things in his word. I'm gonna share three of them with you this morning. And one of the first ones is this, God knows everything that's gonna happen. 
everything. He is totally wired in, tuned in, knows everything that's gonna transpire, not just in your past and your present, but also in your future. In Hebrews 4, verse 13, it says this, nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before his eyes, everything. In other words, God can see it all. God is not limited by time. God can actually be in the past and in the present and in the future all at the same time. He can see it all as if it's happening at one time. Let me see if I can give you an example of this. If I were to take you up in a, a blimp, right, and you were to look down on a parade, maybe the Rose Bowl parade or whatever it is, you could see the very beginning of the parade and the middle of the parade and the end of the parade all at the same time. It would be glorious. It really it would just be awesome. But the person down on the earth, right, you can only see what's in front of them at any particular time. Likewise, from God's perspective, he can see it all. There's absolutely nothing hidden from him. He knows everything that's going to happen to you because he's already in the future as well as he's already in the past. And that just means that God is never surprised by anything. He never says, oh, really? I never expected that to happen. Or, oopsie-daisy, sorry about that. Because he always knows what's going to happen. There's nothing that he doesn't know. And there's nothing that's ever going to surprise him. So did he know about the coronavirus? Yeah. Does he know how we're going to get to the other side of it? Does he already have a plan in place? Absolutely. But one of the first things that we need to know about God is that he sees it all at the same time. Now, the second one I'm going to give you today is just a little bit more encouraging than that, but it's this. God has a plan for that future. See, not only does he know about my future, but he also has a plan for my future, and that's incredibly encouraging to me. That he's, if he still has work for me to do, if he still has a plan for my life, then no matter what, I'm not gonna die from the coronavirus. I'm just not, because God still has purpose for my life. If it's time to take me home, best day of my life. Maybe not for everybody else, but best day of my life, right? God has a plan for your future. Jeremiah 29, 11, it says this, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Note the words plans and prosper and hope and future. This is telling us that God has done a lot of thinking about our future. To be honest, God's thought way about, more about your future than you have, a lot more, to be honest. He has plans for your life. He has thought this thing through. And they're good plans. Plans that give you a hope. Plans that give you a future. Not plans to harm you, but plans to bless you. See, God has a plan for your life, and that is good news and something you can know and, and stand your life on. Third thing, God will also be with me every step of the way. Man, man. It's even more encouraging than the last one. See, the third thing the Bible says about my future is that God will be with me every step of the way. In Hebrews 13, 5, God says this. God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Because the reality is that none of us really know what's gonna happen in the next year, or to be honest, the rest of this year. But regardless of what happens to you, you're not gonna go through it alone. See, God says, I'm with you. I'll always be with you. I have been with you. I'm going to keep on being with you. You'll never have to go through anything by yourself. This is called God's faithfulness to us. You know, the theme verse for this whole series that I've chosen, um, and especially for this message perhaps, is this one from Psalm 34, verse four. It reads, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all of my fears. It says, I sought the Lord. And not a therapy and not a technique, not the president, not the governor, but I sought the Lord and he delivered me from all of my fears. See, for every fear that you and I go through, there is a corresponding attribute of God that answers that fear 100%. Something about his character, his personality, his nature that, that corresponds to every single fear that we've got. So your fears often come from either not understanding or either not trusting the various aspects of God's character. If you'd like to get over your fears, then God says, the secret always is to seek the Lord, to understand what God's really like. Because once you understand what God's really like, 
You don't have to, anything to be afraid of anymore. And each of the fears you, you have, that there's this corresponding characteristic of God that, again, answers that fear 100%. For instance, today we're, we're going to be taking a look at the fear of the future, with good reason, I think, today. And the corresponding attribute of God on this one, in, per, in particular to this fear, is God's faithfulness. And what does God's faithfulness mean? It means that God can't lie, that God can't break a promise, that God does exactly what he says he will do. And this is just part of who God is. God cannot be unfaithful to you because it is impossible for him to be unfaithful to you. In 2 Timothy 2, verse 13, that's what it says. It says, if we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. If somebody ever asks you, is there anything God can't do? You could say, yeah, he can't be unfaithful to me. It's his nature to be faithful. He keeps his promises always. He does what he says he's going to do. He abides by the truth. In fact, the scripture says he is truth. So God cannot be unfaithful. And that just means God always, always keeps his promises to you. In Psalm 145, verse 13, it says, The Lord is faithful to all of his promises. Every one of them. He cannot break a promise. So what does that have to do with my fear of the future? Well, there's over 7,000 promises in the Bible. They're like blank checks from God, from God to you, right? Waiting to be filled out in order to be taken advantage of. Time after time, God says, if you'll just trust me in this, I will do this in your life. I will do this in your life. There's over 7,000 of those in the scriptures. And this morning, we're going to go over just three of them. I picked out three of the promises of God that I think had particular import for us this morning. But God says, if you will believe these, if you'll just trust me in these, you'll have nothing to fear about your future ever. So what are they? Well, the first one is this. I can depend on God to guide me when I'm confused. I think this is a super important one for us today because nobody really knows what's going on. All of the, the leaders in our country, they're just guessing on this, trying to figure it out as we go along, and I think they've done a good job. But the reality is we're still kind of confused, kind of uncertain about what the future holds. And this is very important because part of the fear that we have about the future is we just don't know what's going to be happening there. We don't know what we're going to be doing there. We know it's going to be new. It's going to be a new situation, and you think, how am I supposed to act in that situation? What am I supposed to do in that situation? How am I supposed to cope in that situation? What will the problems be there? Will I get better? Will things get better? You're filled with all sorts of questions, but one thing that you can count on in your future is that you're going to have to make some decisions in your future. Some of you hate that. You hate to make decisions. You hate to make decisions because you're afraid you're going to make the wrong one. And you might. So the whole idea of the future means new challenges, new decisions that it means that you have to make. And some of those decisions you make might be just wrong. So it can be confusing. It can be terrifying. Let's just admit it. Life's complex. Sometimes there are no easy solutions to what you're going through. You've got a loved one on life support for six months and you're wondering why in the world, God? There's no easy answer to that. Life is complex and yet God says because of my faithfulness, you can trust me to guide you when you're confused, when things aren't going according to plan, when you're worried about what the future is going to be like. I'm with you and I've got you. Another thing we can know. I can depend upon God to assist me Whenever I'm tempted, man, whenever you're shut in this long and you start going stir crazy, the temptations come too, don't they? There's a lot of things that are going to change in your life in the future. But one of the things that is never going to change is you're going to have the same old temptations, same old problems, same old weaknesses that you've had before. And you're going to have these probably for the rest of your life because Satan knows your hot buttons. And so he knows the areas of weakness in your life. And he's going to keep on hitting that button over and over and over for the rest of your life. And that means if you have a predisposition to lose your temper, then probably for the rest of your life you're going to struggle and deal with that particular issue of anger. Or if you have this tendency or predisposition to get depressed, you're probably going to struggle for the rest of your life with this predisposition. 
But that does not mean, and hear me say this, that does not mean you have to give in to it. And that does not mean that you cannot overcome it. It just means it's going to be a struggle. I had a good friend in Texas uh, when we were there, and, and he, was, he was an alcoholic, sober for like 35 years, and, and every once in a while I'd ask him about it, and I said, man, you've been sober for 35 years. Why do you keep calling yourself an alcoholic? And he said, Mike, it's... It's a day-to-day struggle. And yeah, God has given me strength to, to be without it for a long period of time, but it's just, I don't know, it's part of my makeup. It's part of what I struggle with on this life. It's, it's always going to be there. And so it, it reminds me that I have to keep fighting against it, that I have to keep choosing the right path, that I can't give in to the temptation. I think that's true with a lot of us and, I don't know, different pet sins that we have in our lives as well. In Corinthians 10, verse 13, though, Paul writes this, he says, no temptation is irresistible. And so anytime somebody comes to you and they say, man, I just couldn't help myself, it just happened, I I, I was a victim, they're lying. God says, there is no situation irresistible. You can always trust God to keep the temptation from becoming so strong that you can't stand up under it. For he has promised this in his word. That's his faithfulness, and he will do what he says. He says he will show you how to escape. You don't have to walk with fear anymore because of these different temptations in your life. If you're walking with the Lord in your life, you know that he will always provide a way out for you to bear up under that temptation. Why? Because again, God knows exactly your struggle. He knows what you're going through. He's pulling for you 100% and he's already preparing an escape route ahead. What you need in your life more than anything else, face in the future, It's perspective. You need the big picture to see that God's got it all, right? It's like if we were driving up a mountain on roads that are super curvy and and all of a sudden you're kind of making good time and you come up behind an old geezer and a camper and he's got a sign on his bumper, you know, reading, I'm spending my kid's inheritance, right? Or something like that. And and anyway, he's going about one mile an hour and he's sightseeing, he's having a great time just enjoying the, the scenery, he's soaking it up got like a mile long line behind him and you're in that moment it wouldn't be nice if you could just pick up your phone and call like a a helicopter and the helicopter could come and it could kind of look ahead in the road around the curves to see if anybody was coming and if nobody was coming they could call you back and say okay go now go now go now but then if they saw a big line of cars coming at you they'd say don't go don't go it's not safe if you go now you'll be creamed that would be a great perspective It will allow you to see something that you couldn't currently see. And I'll tell you what, God has that in your life. Since he already knows what's going to happen, right? You can call into him anytime you want through prayer and say, is this a smart decision or a dumb decision? God says, I see ahead, right? It's okay to make this decision. Or, no way, don't do this. (laughs) Warning, warning, warning. If you do this, you're going to have a head-on collision, But that's what it means to trust God to guide us, right, when we're confused. And to trust God to assist me when I'm tempted. But there's a last one, too. I can trust God to support me whenever I get overwhelmed. So let me ask you, do you ever feel overwhelmed by the speed of change in our world today? Have you gotten overwhelmed at different points as we've gone through this coronavirus, kind of shut-in craziness, right? Do you realize how quickly things are changing? New information literally every day, new technologies happening every day, things that you just take for granted today we didn't have around even 10 years ago. In fact, we couldn't have done what we're doing today 10 years ago. I mean, Mike and James have done such an incredible job getting us online, but but we didn't have all this 10 years ago. There's no way we could have done anything close to this 10 years ago. Even in your own personal life, You don't know the problems that you're going to face in the next hour, much less the next week, the next year, the next decade. Any of you see the coronavirus thing coming? No. And because of the size of our church family, just with the law of averages, some of us in this next year are going to get cancer. And some of us are going to lose a loved one. And some of us are, are going to trip over a cord. And some of us are going to have a major accident. Some of us are going to lose a job, and some of us are going to have kids that flake out and go the wrong direction. So what do you do in those times? Panic? It seems like that's our MO, but are we just going to lock the doors and stay inside for the rest of our lives in fear? 
No, at least I hope not. I hope that's not the plan, right? At some point, we have to start living again. And when you do, you have to trust the faithfulness of God. He says that when you are overwhelmed, I will always be there to support you, to guide you, to help you, to get you to the other side. Isaiah 42, verse 2 and 3, it says, When you go through the deep waters and great trouble, I will be with you. And when you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. And when you walk through the fires of oppression, you will not be burned. For I am the Lord your God. He's saying he is faithful. And he will never allow more on you than he puts in you to bear it up. God will be faithful. There's actually 365 fear knots in the Bible. Love that. One for every day of the year. And God says, I want you to get the message. You don't need to be afraid. Not with me. I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will support you whenever you feel overwhelmed. See, in the end, God just says in our relationship to the future that I can depend on God to guide me when I'm confused and to assist me when I'm tempted and to support me when I get overwhelmed. And in light of all that, he just says, what are you afraid of? Well, I mean, what in the world is there to be afraid of in your future? See, ultimately, if you take a step back, it just all boils down to this. Do you really trust God? If you believe God will do what he says it will do, if I trust his faithfulness, there is literally nothing to be afraid of. But on the other hand, if I don't really believe that God will do what he says he will do, then there absolutely is everything to be afraid of in your future. God's always kind of given it to us and says it's your option. It really boils down to this, my fears in myself or my faith in God. Who am I going to trust? Philippians 4.13 says this, I have strength for all things in Christ who encourages me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with power. It doesn't say that you're not going to be afraid. It doesn't say that you're not going to have feelings of panic or doubt. In fact, it doesn't say anything about feelings at all, does it? But it says that Christ will infuse you with the power you need to do the right thing if you just trust him. And that's the power you need to overcome your fear of the future. The knowledge that God loves you, that he's with you, that you are his And he is faithful to his promises. Guys, go with that hope today. And may it help you in every way. And now let me pray. God, I love you so much. And we thank you for this time this morning where we can just kind of dig into your word and just be with you. A time to hear anew your words to us, that you love us, that you've got us, that you're with us, that you're protecting us, Lord, that you're providing us ways out from our temptation, that in every step of the way into our future and in our present and in our past, you have been there, you will be there, you'll continue to be there, that you are a God that loves us without bounds, that is working all things for good in our lives. And it's those promises that you give us over and over in Scripture, Lord. It's the things that sustain us in days like today. It's the things that sustain us with all the other issues that we got in life, the the worries and the fears surrounding employment, the worries and the fears around health, the worries and the fears around relationships. It's those promises that you give us that remind us that you've got us as we go in through this very hard life. They give us peace and hope and strength to not only not be afraid, but to go boldly into the future. So give us that trust today. Continue to send your spirit upon us. Give us that trust today. And may we serve you always with joy. Guys, go with this blessing. May our Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious always unto you. May he look upon you now with his favor and grant you forever his peace. Amen. I count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late 
He's working all things out. He's working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. Count on one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. Is working all things out. Yes, I will. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will all my days. Oh, yes, I will. I choose to praise, to glorify. God's peace and serve the Lord. We'll see you guys next Sunday.